Good morning. We're starting our thirty-first lecture. <coughs> we are continuing MOS. <coughs> you remember, let us have a very quick recapitulation of the last lectures. But remember that I do the diagram of the cross-sectional diagram of an n-channel MOSFET showing the depletion layer. You remember that I, I do one diagram which is shaded by black lines. That assumed that the depletion layer width below the channel is constant in thickness. There is no deep depletion caused by the drain induced, drain voltages induced by the drain. On the other hand, I also tried to show you the extension of this depletion layer, the extension of the depletion layer by this additional green shaded region, which accounts for the depletion over and above the channel depletion due to the gate voltage. And that is the extra one is due to the voltage, the channel voltage induced by the drain bias. And as a result, at every point, the total surface potential is the sum of twice phi f plus vy, where vy, v as a function of y, is a channel potential induced by the drain bias. If drain bias is zero, that vy is zero. In that case, everywhere the surface potential is twice phi f in inversion condition. And as a result, the thickness was constant equal to d. But because of the application of the drain bias, actually, this total surface potential becomes the sum of twice phi f plus vy, v as a function of y, which is the channel potential induced by the drain bias. And as a result, there is deep depletion. So the depletion layer in that case gradually increases in thickness as we move from source to drain. Then you remember in the last class what we did, we considered a simple model, a simple model where the, we ignored the channel drain induced channel depletion. And hence we got ultimately we first wrote down the equation for QS, then the VG dash, where VG dash is the voltage over and above the flat band voltage. Then we, uh, we, we wrote that when inversion, that is when VG is more than VT, that means the channel is inverted, the channel is inverted, then we wrote for VG dash like this, where the component QNY by CI is coming, due to inversion. This first term will not be present in the equation, will be very, very small, up to Vt, for Vg less than equal to Vt, for Vg less than equal to Vt, the first term will be very small compared to the second, third and fourth terms. The fourth term here on the other hand is arising out of the channel potential induced by the drain bias, whereas twice phi f is a saturated value of psi f when there is no drain bias. When drain bias is zero, Vy is zero. So the saturated value of psi A, so surface potential was twice phi A. This was a, some approximation. You remember psi A does not exactly saturate, but psi A increases, you know, becomes almost nearly constant at twice phi A above Vt. When Vg is more than Vt, Psi S becomes almost saturated at twice phi f. So that was the expression. From there we got the expression for QD max. While writing the QD max in the last class, you remember in the within the square root sign, I neglected that Vy. In fact, Vy should have come here. This should have been twice QNA epsilon S into twice phi f plus Vy because the total channel potential is twice phi a plus py. But we neglected that, and that is why it is called, this derivation ignores drain-induced channel depletion to get simple results, okay, for simplification purpose. So we got this equation. Ultimately, we could write Vg dash in this form, where these two taken together is nothing but Vt minus Vfb. 
Bt is the actual threshold voltage and Vfb is a final flat board. This total thing was derived earlier and that was under flat band approximation as threshold voltage. We derived the threshold voltage under flat band approximation as this plus this already, but thereafter taking into account the effect of flat band voltage, that is the effect of work function difference between metal and semiconductors, the effect of fixed oxide charge at the interface, we found that there exists a VF which is necessary to make the band flat, energy band flat up to the interface. So this quantity is therefore is nothing but the difference of actual threshold voltage and the flat band voltage. And then phi i. Ultimately, you remember that we, we, therefore, we ultimately from this equation, from this equation, we obtained an equation for Qn as a function of y, the inverse charge density as a function of y, like this, where Vg dash minus Vt dash was found to be the same as Vg minus Vt. Vg dash is Vg minus Vfb, Vt dash is Vt minus Vfb. So the difference is nothing but Vg minus Vt. Ultimately, after obtaining this equation for Q and Y, we wrote the expression for Id as in the following fashion. And I finally found that Id can be expressed as W, the width of the channel or the depth of the channel, Qn, the charge density, inversion charge density at the particular Y. This is a function of Y, please remember. Qn is a function of Y. Mu n is the mobility we assume to be to be constant, which is again a rough approximation. Let me tell you, mu n depends on n, but that n dependence, concentration dependence of mu n was ignored, multiplied by e y. E y capital epsilon y is nothing but the electric field at y, the lateral component of the electric field at y, for which the due to which the current is flowing. We neglected diffusion in this theory, so this theory of I d the current transport was based on drift term only. We neglected the diffusion component. It is just opposite to that of bipolar transistor. In bipolar transistor, it was a diffusion, pure diffusion model, but here it is a pure drift model. This is a very important thing. Ultimately, we got ID as this. There is a negative sign because epsilon is actually the dv dy minus of that, but for simplicity to avoid sign confusion, we did not write sign afterward. So this dash negative is actually a negative and we ignored it. And ultimately we wrote ID dy is equal to this. And finally integration, after integration from zero to over the length of the channel, ID comes out because ID is constant and is given by W mu n C i assuming mu n is independent of n. So it also comes out of integration. C i is a constant. So at x, y, y is equal to 0, at y is equal to 0, potential was assumed to be 0. That means we assume Vs is equal to 0. Vs is grounded. Under this derivation, we assume Vs is equal to 0. Another term is also called body of the substrate. That means substrate potential is also 0. These are the two things we consider. Vs 0, Vb or V sub. B stands for body. Or sometimes we write V sub. SUV. Instead of writing sub, I am writing B. B stands for body. That means body, substrate, and source are shorted under this approximation. You get, after integration, this rather simple equation for ID. This rather simple equation for ID is valid only for the so called linear region. Only valid for the so called linear region. And we found that if VD is very small, then the second term is also really small compared is a square term which becomes very small compared to this and we obtained an equation like this which is id is equal to this where it shows that id is proportional to vd so it is a purely ohmic region that happens only around the origin for very low values of vd you see that id is practically proportional to vd but the value of that Vd by Id, the resistance, so-called resistance, or Id by Vd, which is the so-called conductance of the channel, that it can be controlled by Vg. Therefore, such resistance is also called a field-controlled or voltage-dependent resistor. Voltage-dependent or field-controlled resistor. The MOSFET 
or small values of VD. So it is a very important thing. If if VG is more than VT, then for small values of VD of VD, the MOSFET behaves as as a gate control. I call it gate control register. Higher the gate bias, higher is the value of VG, stronger will be the inversion layer, hence the conductance will be less or resistance. Will, conductance will be more and resistance will be less. Okay? After this we discussed in the last class. From here, we get the value of the following two things. One we call GD set. GD, sorry, set, set comes up. Right? GD linear GD linear, okay? That is nothing but del ID del VD with VG constant is simply given by mu n ci w by l into VG minus VT. So the drain conductance as seen here is nothing but ci mu l w by l VG minus VT. I have already told you that the MOSFET behaves as a gate control register for small values of V because this equation is valid only for very small values of V so that the second term can be dropped. Pure linear region, it's called pure linear region. Similarly, GM, the trans conductance in the linear region is equal to del ID del VG means VD constant. When I differentiate partially, means VD constant is simply given by mu n ci w by l into vd this is rather a very interesting thing you see that in both cases either the channel conductance drain conductance means channel conductance and the linear the trans conductance del id by del vd mutual conductance they are proportional to mu n as expected because higher is the carrier mobility these conductances should be more they are proportional to CI. That means inversely proportional to the thickness of the insulator. CI is equal to epsilon I. So what is the CI? CI is equal to epsilon I insulator dielectric the permittivity divided by the insulator thickness. DI is the insulator thickness, okay? So you see that lower is the value of DI more is the GD and GM expected because there will be stronger coupling, stronger gate effect. Higher is the value of epsilon, dielectric mode is again there is a stronger gate effect. It is directly poor, this so W by L is a geometrical factor, which is so important. Always in MOS physics or MOS device uh, simulation, you'll find this figure W by L will repeatedly come. So W by L is a nothing but geometric control by mass geometry while fabrication, by controlling the mass geometry, we can change W by L, we can control the W by L, hence we can, therefore higher is the value of W by L, it is always preferable to have a higher GM or higher G, both are very desirable. Lower GM or lower GD is undesirable, it is very important. So normally technology fixes now the value of L, 1 micron, 0.5 micron, 0.18 micron, 0.12 micron. This is L. The minimum feature size is nothing but the L. Okay? It is a W which then plays a very important role. L is usually fixed in today's technology. But W, which is very important, has to be controlled for adjusting the value of GM. Okay?
Now at drain induced pinch off, it means that corresponding condition is if this is your source and if this is your drain so you have just achieved a condition which is this is qn you have just achieved a condition which is like this this is l this is zero so qn l is equal to zero And what is QNL is equal to just check the value of CI which we have derived QNY. From here, what is QNL? QNL is equal to CI into VG minus VT and VY at Y is equal to L is VD that is minus VD. So, and that is equal to zero. Therefore, Vg minus Vt is equal to Vd. So, this is very important. Under that condition, when we ignore the drain induced deep depletion, under the condition for which we assume drain induced we neglect or ignore the drain induced deep depletion under that condition we find that this so called pinch off of the channel at the drain end will occur when vg minus vt is equal to vd which is the same as vg minus vd is equal to vt effective drain by gate bias here which is vg minus vd that is equal to vt if you exceed vt over this then Vg minus Vt becomes less than Vt. So there will be a wider pinch of region. I'll be coming to that afterwards. So under this condition, substituting this in our current equation, this Vg minus Vd is equal to Vt. But here in this equation, if you substitute Vd is equal to Vg minus Vt, I call it in my previous, maybe this is, I call A equation. This is B. So substituting B in A, I am sorry, in this particular class, I am not writing down the equation numbers because of certain problems. So you have to yourself put that in your notes, OK? I am not writing. Here, sometimes I am writing A, B, etc., but continuous 1, 2, 3, 4 kind of equations I am not maintaining because of some problem in taking this particular class. So, substituting that B in A, you get a rather simple equation for ID, which I call ID set. And that is equal to mu n ci w by 2L into Vg minus Vt whole square. You please check. Substituting here, Vd is equal to Vg minus Vt. This simply gives you that rather simple equation for the saturation current. Id saturation is simply given by this. So as a result, if I plot the Id versus Vd, under the assumption that Vs is equal to 0 and Vb is equal to 0. Then we get a curve which is a dashed curve which is a plot of this Id versus Vg. If I plot Id set versus Vg, then I get a square low curve like this. So this is the plot of Id 
set versus vg then for different values of id if i now plot if i now plot id you know then what we are getting this boundary is nothing but the boundary for saturation before that the current was increasing linearly following the old equation so what i'll get i'll get a set of curves like this where this may be for bg is less is equal to or less than vt and this is for vg1 vg2 vg3 vg4 where vg4 is more than vg3 positively vg2 vg1 vt so for values of gate voltage up to vt the drain current is practically zero so below that this region is called cutoff below the horizontal line is called cutoff above this line when vg exceeds vt the actual threshold voltage then as you increase vd initially the current increases linearly because in that case that half vd squared term can be dropped as vd increases then it starts the rate of increase fall because of the minus half vd squared term this we call it we say that the current increases sublinearly as soon as i reach this point or this point or this point or this point we say that the drain induced pinch off has taken place for example here for this particular case the value of vd here vd is equal to how much vg2 minus vt so at every such point from which the saturation starts to the right we have the saturation region at every point vd is equal to the corresponding vg minus vt and that is what is known as drain induced pinch off point beyond this we find the current the current the practically it is horizontal here in fact if to if we this or the pure saturation for vd greater than equal to vg minus vt assumes or neglects assumes uh rather i should say neglects uh channel length modulation okay actually this curve there is a little rate of increase which we shall discuss afterward and that is due to the channel length modulation which i indicated earlier that mechan in fact this channel length modulation becomes more important only in more advanced devices where the length is comparable channel length is comparable comparable to the value of the depletion layer width okay then only uh, as well as thickness of the oxide etc is comparable to that otherwise if this length this channel length is very large we can safely ignore the delta l the small spread of the pinch off from the drainage can be ignored so that the current remains almost constant it behaves as ideal constant current source just like our transistor transistor also you know that behaves more or less as the ideal constant current source in the active region when under which condition we assume that we neglect the base width modulation 
That means when the base weight is large compared to the depletion layer thickness induced by the reverse bias collector base junction. In that case also we assume that RD effect is negligible. Here also there will be a so called RD effect very similar to that because of the channel length modulation. And using the same equation I can now get an expression for GM the transconductance under saturation region that is equal to del ID saturation versus gel VG and that is simply equal to mu n ci w by l into vg minus vt so just the differentiating this with respect to vg we get this it can be easily derived from this curve suppose we just draw a vertical here as i here in fact vd is constant so while this that during this derivation vd has to be kept constant so at this horizontal line vertical line vd is constant so if i go from this curve to this curve so what is the change of vg that is vg2 minus vg1 what is the change of id that is id2 minus id1 that id2 minus id1 divided by vg2 minus vg1 is nothing but this limit vg2 minus vg1 tends to zero that is why the differential coefficient okay and here also you know that this is very much dependent on w by l mu n and c in the same way as the linear region but then G gm set is directly proportional to vg minus vt higher is a great voltage more sensitive will be the device you can get a higher gain it is just opposite to our bipolar transistor. If you remember the bipolar transistor behavior, as you go to higher base current, there is a clamping. The curves get more or less nearer as you go to IB1, IB2, IB3, 2B. If you got go on doubling, doubling, tripling, three, four times the IB base current, gradually the curve get clamped. But here, curve gets separated, which is not shown here. Higher is the gate where the curve gets separated. So you can get some kind of you know, advantage here. And you just see that GD saturation should be equal to what? How much should be GD saturation? Differential because this, there is no nothing involving VD, so it will be zero. The significance is it is a constant current source. Okay. Let us now go for the so-called other derivation, which is more important because the second level derivation of IDVD relationship, IDVD relationship. Including Drain induced channel in fact let me tell you the, the current voltage model which have just now discussed finished discussion form the basis of level one level one you know that MOS model in spice that is for the level two, the second model applies. In this case, as you remember, let me once again draw the diagram. There is no harm. These diagrams, as much you draw, you acquire more experience. So therefore, there is no harm in drawing this diagram repeatedly. Practically, it is an advice to you.
So this is the diagram now. We have to follow. We are no longer assuming that the depletion layer weight is constant and independent of channel channel direction. That means along the channel length. Along the channel, dy continuously increases because of the induced potential from the drain side. Already, let me repeat. At this condition, for Vg more than Vt, usually Vg more than Vt, for Vg more than Vt, at any point, the depletion layer weight is due to a surface potential, which is the sum of twice phi f plus Vy. V is a channel potential induced by the drain bias, whose value at the drain end is Vd, at the source end is Vs or 0 if it is grounded. So this should be very clear. Then we can write for dy under max. By max, I mean that phi s has saturated to twice phi f. Is given by root over twice epsilon s vy plus twice phi f divided by q value. We are considering n MOS case. Please remember accordingly you have to change the signs etc. So all derivations were valid for n MOS but you can suitably modify it to p MOS. Polarities by reversing the polar. Therefore you can write Vg dash now as QNY by CI plus 1 upon CI As before, Vg dashed is the difference of Vg and Vfb. So only modification now here is the inclusion of the term Vy here, which we neglected earlier. This Vy in the earlier derivation was not there, and therefore things have become a little bit more complicated. And therefore you can write QNY as Vg dash minus Vy minus twice phi f Ci minus square root of twice Q N A epsilon s I am simply always writing the modulus because twice phi f, you know, for this is valid for this thing, you know, that it has to be kept very clearly in this in mind. <coughs> Why the modulus sign has been shown under the square root, you should be very carefully understand, must understand it. So you got this expression for q in y from this rather simple thing. So instead of writing it in terms of vg and vt, earlier it was a rather simple equation because vt came out. A portion of the terms just was recognized as Vt. Therefore, equation was very easily derived in as a function of Vg and Vt and Vd. But now the Vt is not coming because of the inclusion of Vy here. Okay. Then in the same way, Id, which is the same derivation which I did earlier, is valid. Let me ignore the sign, therefore I write it like this.
Now this QNY you substitute here. This equation for QNY, which you have derived earlier, and maybe I call it C and I call it D. This is D. So substituting D in substituting, sorry, substituting C in D. Substituting the Q1 Y expression from here into Y. Doing the integration from 0 to L in the same way, I get, so, so and integrating from y is equal to 0 to y is equal to L VD. We get ID slightly more complicated equation Whereas before, the Vg dashed is equal to Vg minus Vfb. This equation for Id is more comprehensive than the equation derived earlier. Yeah, it will be completed, just to say. Thank you. Let me check mu n c i w by l v g dest minus twice phi f v d by 2 minus v d minus 2 by 3 root over twice epsilon s q n a by c i multiplied by v d plus 2 f to the power 3 by 2 minus 2 phi f to the power 3 by 2 bracket complete then second bracket complex. Okay, this is the expression ID which is derived under more stringent condition and you get a slightly better result. In fact, if you plot the IDVD characteristic is using this equation and repeat it by the using the older equation, you'll find a small difference. It's not a very big difference, but that difference is also very important. Okay. Now, here also, if we assume that V is small for small values of VD. This ID can be approximated as you have to do this exercise yourself. I have verified but it's not showing it here. See that for small values of VD, after some manipulation and substituting for VT, the same expression for VT which you know, okay, and you finally get this for small values of VD. You can try yourself. The second order term involving VD has to be neglected. 
and that's how you get this equation. Second order means uh, you just you have to try not all the second order terms, but including the second order and third. You just you can try to do it yourself. That you simplify this equation to get this for small values of v d. Here, this equation looks very similar to the ones which you derived earlier. Only this this term is otherwise it was this minus half v d square. Now this extra term has been added. And again, for very small values of v d, for this equation becomes the same equation as we have already achieved, which is I d is equal to mu n c i w by L into V g minus V t into V d. Same equation. So, you say for very small values of V d, this term, overall term goes and this must be something, sorry, 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 there is a little mistake. Half this, this V d square, this second bracket here goes, which is the same old expression, this is the same old expression. And from where you get the similar the same values for GM and GD, and there is no need of further any further discussion. Now, when you go to saturation, now consider the case a little bit in more detail. In saturation, let me write draw the three diagrams as before. It will be like this, where this is nothing but the depletion layer boundary. And this is your inversion charge density. Now, the situation is like this now. Second case is
So this is the pinch up point. On the other hand, in the third case, You see that there is a pinch of region of thickness delta L. So as a result, the ch channel length, I call it L dashed, and that L dashed is equal to L minus delta L. So I have depicted three conditions. The first condition when you applied a gate bias more than Vt, but Vt is practically zero, then there is a uniform inversion layer, uniform depletion layer. Uniform depletion layer corresponds to corresponds to psi s is equal to twice phi f. Constant uniform inversion layer. Then same Vg metal more than Vt, but now Vd is just equal to Vd saturation. Then the depletion layer around the source will be corresponding to that for VBI, but then depletion layer will gradually increases and it achieves a value as controlled by Vd at the drain end. And the inversion layer density will gradually decrease and will just pinch up at this point. And in this case, the resistance up to this channel, up to this will be quite low. And beyond, in the drain side also resistance is low. Only at the pinch of point, the resistance is very high. So the entire VD will practically drop across the pinch of region. And as a result, the electric field inside will be very, very high. And the carriers will travel in saturation velocity. OK? Next the case, when Vg is greater than Vt, but Vd is now more than Vd sat. So the pinch up point will shift from the drainage to a little bit left right region. So there is an effective length model, channel length modulation, which is I call L minus delta L. And the delta L is a function of how much the difference of Vd and Vt sat. Higher is a value compared to Vt sat. But this will be really very small compared to the actual total channel thickness. But that results in an effective shortening of the channel length. And as a result, the current increases. And that is what is known as challenge length modulation. Anyway, Okay, I'll stop here today.